trying my best. Clicks. <laughs> um, so, hey guys, uh, welcome back to Who You Are. Uh, this is a show where we get to know those in the music industry. Uh, today we're joined by the wonderful Tian Todd. How are you? How's it going? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> no, I'm good. Um, yeah, just uh, getting by. Getting by. Yeah, it's a bit like that these days. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, so I know. How, how have you been? How have I been? Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's not go into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. I think it's been like that for so many people this year, myself included. I think it's like feeling a bit like a roller coaster. Yeah. Just a bit like taking each day as it comes. Yeah, definitely. It's especially yeah. when you're doing music. But um, I wanted mm. to talk to you about so you've been involved in the Queensland music scene for quite some time now uh could you tell us a bit um about who you are and what you do in that in the scene yeah so um oh my gosh I I I wear a few hats but I I would say first and foremost I'm a singer songwriter uh, and I've been yeah um singing around the scene since 2014 actually no probably 2017 because I started studying in 2014. So um, so I did my music degree 2014, graduated in 2016 from JMC and then kind of like didn't release music yet until 2017 just because I was still finding myself as an artist and things like that and still finding like what I was into. Um yeah, and also like finding my feet as a person as well. I think sometimes when, and you probably relate to this, when you're a musician, you forget that you're also a human um, with like you've got to look after that part of yourself as well and you completely immerse yourself in your art to the point where it's almost damaging because you're like, hang on, I've also got to like make sure I'm, you know, living my life and taking time to rest. So. Um, yeah, actually, that kind of came later. I feel like I'm a bit all over the place. Yeah, so <laughs> <In my timelines. laughs> but yeah, no, so singing songs and then, um, yeah, started uh, putting on shows, uh, a, a series called The Bloom Series around 2018. Oh, Siri just buzzed. That was weird. Um, and yeah, and then I started uh, doing publicity and things for myself, uh, my partner, who's a musician as well, I started doing his campaign, John Keenan, check him out. Um, and uh, I also, yeah, and then I started Moonstone Artists, which is essentially marketing and publicity events and all the shenaz. So, uh, yes, kind of a few things. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's definitely a lot. Um, you kind of touched on it, yeah. touched on it there, but um, mm. so you went to uni and then you got into that. How... What was the process like for becoming a singer-songwriter? Like you eased into it slowly? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, I feel like for me, I actually didn't start writing songs until I was, or like writing songs seriously until I was 20. Um, I kind of like, I was like that person, like I was always very isolated as a teenager. I just like play music in my room. I knew I always wanted to do it, but um, I, I kind of, I, I just knew nothing. So I went into like the industry knowing nothing, started studying. And I just knew I had so much to learn that I wanted to just take my time. I was like, I want to just take all genres on board, all styles, listen to everyone, like all of my peers and things, advice. Um, and I think as well, it was kind of, you know, you got to take influence a little bit, but you just got to kind of it's like, I hate that thing, but everyone always says, you're going to write all the bad songs to get to the good songs. And honestly, I'm in that phase right now because <laughs> I haven't been writing the past couple of months. And I'm like, I just want to write a good one though, but I know I need to, you know, it's, it's like a muscle. You've got to exercise it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so no, you get it. But that's the thing. Like um, I definitely, um, yeah, I don't know. just eased my way into it, I guess. Just was like, oh. I've got to write about that yeah. form of therapy. So, uh, yeah, it's going to go with it. Form of therapy is a good way to put it, I think, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very cathartic, writing songs. Uh, 
So what goes into writing songs for you? Because you got to sift through all the bad stuff. Is it just sifting through all the bad stuff till you hit a good one, or do you go into it with anything in mind when you're writing songs? Um, I feel like as well. I feel like each song's different, so it's hard because I feel like sometimes I'll. I feel like I get the most inspiration when I'm literally in my car driving, listening to music. But of course you can't pull over all the time and write notes in your phone. So, oh, my God, the amount of lyrics I've lost. Oh, my God. I won't think about it. Just because you're driving, you're like, wow, I've got to write that down. You get home, you just forget about it. You're like, yeah. Um, but uh, I would say that, yeah, my my main thing is I maybe I, I have kind of one-liners in my phone sometimes, but um, – I, I don't know. It's really difficult. Some songs I just sit at the piano and it just comes out. You're like, oh, my God, yay. Um, might be just like a little riff you play on the guitar or rarely, but sometimes I like to write with Ableton. I used to – I went through that phase a lot a couple of years ago, but at the moment I think I've just stripped back and I've, I'm not doing a lot of production at the moment because, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm not there yet, I'm not there at the moment. Um so I don't know. Each song's kind of different, and I guess like the styling. And I'm I'm like a low key, actually high key Taylor Swift fan. I don't even care. I know I'm gonna get hated on for it, but her latest album oh, it's is incredible. Cool. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Because uh, I'm a big national fan. Like, I, like they're my one of my favorite bands. And yeah, I think Aaron Aaron Des Desa, what the one of the writers, but he wrote the album with Taylor Swift and it was just like two worlds for me coming together and then it's just inspired me so much that I'm like I would love to write an album like that so that's been inspiring me um I don't know I forgot that I'm sorry I <laughs> no, you're right you you kind of answered the question it is <laughs> yeah it is yeah. when writing music yeah. is not really clear cut you kind of have to figure it out as you go um and drawing yeah. inspiration from here and there um what what specifically are you into about the Taylor Swift album? Because it's a really solid album. Like I haven't been as into her stuff beforehand, but then this came out and it's like, oh damn. Yeah. So what what do you think about it? Oh, honestly, I think it's just I don't know. For me, it's probably definitely the instrumentation plays a major part in it. Um, and and really just how it's like constructed harmonically and all that jazz like it's I listen to a lot of that kind of music so for me instantly I was like yes but it's blending two worlds because I've always loved Taylor Swift songwriting yes I know she lost herself a little bit with reputation yeah. but I still believed in her like I <laughs> but um yeah I think like with folklore it's almost like blending red Taylor Swift because that's one of my other favorite albums with this alternative folk uh, I, I don't know. It's just, it's very unique. Yeah. It's like, I really haven't heard it before. I And it sounds weird saying that, but it just really is like its own thing. And I think that the track she did with Bonnie Ver is just, oh my God. Yeah. So good. I'm actually annoyed because you know what? I think Triple J should play that song. Oh. I'm just saying. Oh. I think it's actually, I know, I'm coming out and saying it because it is quite alternative. It's not pop like mm. yeah it's got the hooks and things but it's actually very like if that was Bonnie Ver and like I don't know Billie Eilish like they would be playing that yeah that's that track because it's very anyway yeah but that's my it's just good what did you like about it like what drew you in um so I liked it because I was listening to a lot of that music at the time my partner is quite into that um, kind of folky low end stuff. She's always showing me cool artists that do that kind of stuff, and it's like, yeah, Taylor Swift is doing this now, and it's good to see that evolution. It's good to, it's really good production in that kind of environment because a lot of the, that kind of genre tends to be pretty. Uh, as an audio engineer, I find that some of it tends to be a bit too rough, uh, but yeah. this stuff was. Yeah quite solid well recorded instrumentation was really good um and just it sounded like an album as a whole as opposed to just these individual yes. songs so yeah was there a song that stood out for you 
I can't say there is, unfortunately. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> listening to it and being like, this is this As is solid whole. blow me away kind of thing because everyone on yeah. Twitter was going off about it. So I'm like, all right, I'll have a listen. Yeah. So. Yes, I think it just really like so many people that wouldn't normally dive into the Taylor Swift pool kind of did yeah. and I loved it I love being like <laughs> I have a lot of friends that don't like Taylor Swift so I was like in your face she's amazing yeah. and I knew it all along like <laughs> but no it's yeah very good very I good. mean but there's something to be said for that kind of artist that makes it in the music industry like people don't necessarily like them like there's a lot of musicians who don't like them for what they do but they make it um, and it can be almost daunting seeing that and figuring out how you're going to make it in the industry. Um, yeah. So how, how did you find, because you're just, how do you find it getting people into the industry? Because that's part of your business with Moonstone kind of stuff. Uh, it's really, it's and look, it's, it's hard, but it's, I, I think, oh, that's tough because for me, like I, oh man, like, oh. It's just this industry. Uh, I had an anti-music industry weekend last week. I was like, I, I'm not, I'm not bloody looking at my phone, <laughs> like because I follow a lot of musicians. So sometimes when I'm having a day, which is so normal, this is the thing we need to really normalize um, that nothing is correct in yeah. this industry. There is no right way to do anything, and it really can get you down and it's okay because everyone still gets down doesn't matter what level you're at everyone still gets insecure everyone still thinks they're not good enough like you can have that confidence but you're always going to have that time where you're like oh my gosh like have I done enough you know have I you know so getting into the industry is there's just no straight road and everyone has different accolades Mm. that they can take for themselves you know one person might not have been played on triple j but one but that person's been like had at least 20,000 streams on Spotify yeah. that everyone has their own like successes. And I think you just can't compare your successes to anyone because everyone's on their own journey. And I think getting into the industry is it's, you just got to put yourself out there. And I hate that because it's like, what does that mean? Just release, you yeah. know, like, well, don't just drop a single on SoundCloud, but you know, I mean, I say this a lot with like Moonstone and stuff, but I'm like, you know, create your own hype, you know, put a single out there, but build it up. Even if you haven't got your family following you, at least you've got someone that believes in your music and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Once you kind of, I mean, it's very easy to get sucked in. Sorry, I could go on about this no, for a long going. time. because so, <laughs> But it's, it's very easy to get sucked in to industry standards and especially with all these, you know, I love Q Music. I love what they do um, for emerging artists and things and, you know, they get some amazing speakers in, but everyone kind of sits there and takes notes. And it's like, that's important to definitely get experience, but everyone's different. And just because they say, hey, don't just drop a single two days before doesn't mean that's not the right way for you. So I think taking everything with a grain of salt and, you know, applying what's like, what sits well with your values, what sits well with your genre and and your experiences, um, as well and there was one other thing i was about to say and i i think it's escaped me oh damn it'll come back it'll come but back i definitely think um oh it was about coming into the industry oh my gosh no you're right it's gone it's gone it's gone but like <laughs> it'll come back but just believe in yourself oh my god i need to take my own advice <laughs> yeah no definitely <laughs> it's you, you, I think what it is actually, sorry, that's kind of what it was. It's like you you don't have to believe in you that like it's you don't have to believe in yourself, but you just have to love it enough to persevere through that. You just gotta be like, you know what? I love this, I'm putting it out there. It's about what I want, not about what the industry wants at the end of the day. Because if you put something out there, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So in the beginning when I started. I was so industry concerned. I mean, I literally just did like a music degree. I know what like they're thinking. I know what I should be doing, right? So definitely got really sucked into it. I was so concerned. I was like, why haven't I been playing on Triple J? Why haven't I done this? Oh my gosh, like these are all things that like I sh- that should be happening and then not. And I got to the point where I was so sucked in by it that, I mean, I didn't release all of last year because I was like, I need to realign my values as a person 
And like, at the end of the day, if I don't love my music for me, then what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Like, I, you know, anyway, that's kind of where I was going with that. Sorry. No, ramble, but <laughs> no, I mean, that's kind of what this podcast is about. We like to hear you ramble. <laughs> No, there's good points in there, like a lot of good points. And I also get what you mean about coming out of a music and just, uh, degree or looking at how other people yeah. do it and having it. It's got to be this way and that way. Um, and it yeah. takes a bit, I guess, to come to that realization if you don't have someone else telling you that it doesn't matter as long as you're doing it yeah. your way. Yeah, 100%. Um, so how does that play into Moonstone Artist? Because this is your current project you're doing your current yeah. business my current oh my gosh I'm really loving it it's good I think that's kind of the one thing I'm trying to drill into the musicians I'm working with because a couple of them that I am working with are still emerging that they still I see like what I was like when I was first releasing in them yep. and it's really hard to kind of get that across to an artist and I'm like it's just not not time for you to be on triple J yet. Like you will see this, but it's just not time. You need to build that familiarity in the industry. You need to like, just don't worry about the numbers. Okay. You like this song. You're getting really great traction from it, from everyone that's following you. And that's all that matters right now because it's all stepping stones. Mm. These people that they think like have just dropped a song and taken off already have a team. They already have managers. They already have a label behind them. But, like, obviously they're painted out like they don't have any of that. So it's really easy for these other artists that are also emerging going, wait, but they just took it. It's like, no, they didn't. I can guarantee you it's just that kind of luck of the draw thing. They already had that behind them. So I'm really trying to make sure I'm pushing, like, a positive agenda with Moonstone and building credibility and confidence in these artists rather than, like, you're going to get this, you're going to get this. It's like, yeah, you will get those, but we need to make sure we're taking the right steps to ensure that like you're building that credibility and that foundation for yourself. Mm. Um, so you can have, you know, longevity in your career, but also really don't lose yourself in it. Yeah. I think. No, mm. that's real fair. So I'll just backtrack. Yeah. So Moonstone Artists is your PR um, marketing company for small artists. And what you just said is like hits the nail on head for what you told me a while ago for what you wanted to do with the yeah. company. And it's yeah, yeah, it's amazing to have that something like that come up because you don't see that a lot. Everyone's very it's all almost a little too superficial. What what are your views on that kind of superficiality? Oh my god, yeah, don't even. <laughs> that's a whole other. That's another podcast. Oh. Uh, no, but like, <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, but like, um. Yeah, it's actually really funny you say that because um, it's actually really, this is, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a, this a really good topic of conversation because it's something I really struggle with in the industry. It's probably my, the biggest thing where I'm like, like before and I was like, I've had an anti-music industry weekend because yeah. I just went, if you get drained and as much as I love big sound, I also oh my God, I dread it. Like I do. I really love being able to hang out with my friends and have that fun time and, and you get amongst the live music and you meet other musicians. Like it's just great. But like the superficiality of the industry and it's not everyone. It really isn't. Like there are so many amazing people I know that like inspire me in this industry, but there are so many people that eh, they forget that human element that yeah. I was talking about before. And it's like at the end of the day, like, you know, it, it I, it's just something I struggle with because it makes me question myself mm. as as an artist, but as a as a person. Like I never like like there's been people that have come up to me and I can just tell they just want something from me, and it it makes me go like oh my god like I don't want to come across like that. And then you go and then you're just so concerned like am I being genuine? Like <laughs> you're yeah, like yeah. oh my god am I coming across? Am I being myself? And then you second guess all these things and. So I think it's about just keeping it real. Like, you know, fair enough. If you get an inkling about someone, like, fair enough. Like, go with your gut and stuff. But we're all in this together. And it's about building, like, a really inclusive community. Like, that's, like, my biggest thing. Like, no one hiding stuff from it. Like, oh, I know this email. It doesn't matter. Like, everyone's in this together. Let's build each other up. Because 
it is such an isolating experience being a musician and you need to have a support system around you. And yeah, the superficial crap, it's just, yeah, it's, it's hard, but you'll know, like, it's like, you just get that gut feeling when you're like, Oh my God, I'm not going to deal with that. Mm. You know? And that's kind of like what, yeah, you're, what you were saying, like with Moonstone, like I wanted that to be like, I wanted it to be like, everyone just come here. Like if you have any questions, cause I just remember what it was like coming out of uni and I was like, Oh, I don't even know how to design a poster for my show. Absolutely. Like what, what do I do? You know? So that's kind of what I want Moonstone to be is like just that hub that everyone can come to and be like, okay, like where do I start? Um, you know, and I like, I just have chats with musicians like often, like I'm just like, oh yeah, just message me. Like I had someone ask me the other day, they're like, how did you get on Triple J? I was like, I just sent them an email. Like that's, that's what you do. Yeah. Like it's fine. You know, so I get it. Yeah. I don't know where, sorry, I think I changed the question. No, no, like, when you, <laughs> you're doing fine. <laughs> you, you got all the, all the, all the, you got all the points and all that. Is that, that something that you find? No, but I was going to say like, is that something that you find as well? Like, like, do you struggle with that in the industry? Like seeing that kind of behavior and you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. It's like you also struggle with yourself trying not to have that kind of superficiality. Um, yeah. But definitely in the little bubble I'm in with the audio industry, the audio engineers industry and the background stuff, there's a lot of them are genuine human beings, but there's also almost a level of to get into the big studios and the big Sony and all that, you have to become corporate and sell yourself a bit, um, sell your soul, mm. um, which is something I find a little bit frustrating because yeah. I'm quite transparent and blunt and I can't put on a face like that. So um, no. it's not it's not a normal normal thing to do, I think, and I think trying to move away from that is important and having like companies like yours who are trying to move away from that is a good push in a solid direction personally. I think so. I think as well, like even speaking with you and what you're doing, Mm. it's almost like, well, no, I don't want to put myself in this bubble and adhere to like, you know, almost like changing myself to kind of morph into your thing. I'm just going to create my own thing. And, and, I feel like that's kind of what you've done. And I I relate to that a lot. Like that's kind of what I did with Moonstone. I was like, I don't want to work for anyone and pretend I'm someone I'm not. Like yeah. I just want to be me, do it my way. And so, no, I get you 100%. No, absolutely. It's also the bubble thing too because with like in, even within the music industry, that everyone's in their own bubble and you don't connect with those people. So trying to break down those walls and being like, hey, you're a musician. Here's an audio engineer. Here's a cinematographer. Yeah. Here's a marketing engineer. Instead of being like, I only yeah. know these people, and I think that's important yeah. too. Yeah, that's it. Like expanding your circle and meeting like other people that can, you know, other creatives basically. Just yeah. bring everyone together. Mm. Which is a tricky thing to do, especially when you're starting out. Um, so it's important to find. Or at least it's important to ha- be able to find those people who can connect you, which is easier said than done currently with that superficiality because it just seems so scary to jump in. But I think as well, like everyone's afraid to like, I don't know, it's scary to ask but then because you're, you're like, I genuinely need help right now, but I'm also, I don't want to come across like I'm using you. And that's really hard and something I'm constantly overthinking. Mm. Like, because... There's so many things I'm still yet to learn, especially diving into a whole new sector with publicity. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> like it's scary. I'm still learning these things as well. So for me, I'm a bit the same. Like I'm like, where do I, how do I ask that person without seeming like, oh, but I'm also like, I really admire you and like you have a lot of knowledge. Can you please help me? So it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. hard. I think there's a bit of advice I heard somewhere. Um, that there are two kinds of people in the world when you're asking for advice. Um, nice people and dickheads. <laughs> and you don't know whether they're a nice person or a dickhead until you ask, so you may as well just ask. So. Oh, my God, that's – I think you may have just, like, helped me a lot. Just 
<laughs> oh my god, thanks, Toby. Like straight up though, that's true because if they come back and go, no, 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 it, then it goes, oh, yeah. that's your character. Oh, yeah. all right. I'm just gonna go ask a million questions after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Good plan. Um, so. I guess we've also kind of touched on this too, um, but you have a real passion for helping musicians come into the industry and just helping people get their start. Um, again, we touched on it, but how how do you think you actually got that passion? How to come about? Um, that's oh, that's interesting. Um, I think genuinely, like without sounding like, but like. I, I'm very much like I'm, I'm such an empathetic person, like to the point where it's almost crippling. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of what made me want to do it. I, I don't know. It is kind of like I just know that feeling. Like I know what it's like, kind of like the helping thing. Like I, you know, not knowing where to start and it's scary and what what do I do? And I think that's kind of what like, has always been like my driver. Even with like releasing my music, I'm like, hey, just keep going, just keep going. But uh, it's what inspired me to start the Bloom series originally because I had a lot of friends in the industry that were like, I need, I want to put on a show. And I'm like, let's put on a show. Like, let's just put one on together, hmm. get a whole group of us and make it like a real like wholesome event. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to bring to, yeah, like the marketing side um, with, with what I was doing. And I did have like, I still do sometimes like just have musicians like message me being like, oh my God, like how do I put this logo onto a poster? Like, yeah. it, you know, that kind of thing. And it's it's the littlest things, but you can just like so easily help people out. And yeah, I think it's, that's kind of the main reason why I started it. I just, you just, I don't want, I don't want people to feel alone. Yeah. I think that's what it is in this industry because it's too easy. It's too easy to feel that way. So there's a way that I can make everyone feel like they're a part of something awesome. We can all be a part of it together. Yeah, I'm into that. It's, <laughs> it's, def it's definitely yeah. a vibe. I, and yeah. as we've been saying this whole time, it's something that's very important to push, especially in this day and age. Um, speaking on this yeah. day and age, how, how have you found everything? Because Moonstone also kind of launched during these current corona times. Um, yeah, I've heard it described as the Backstreet Boys re reunion tour. Uh, if you don't <laughs> want to get flagged by YouTube, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but how have you found it with trying to get going in the new climate? I guess we're all trying to figure things out. And how have you found that? Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, it's been interesting. I actually stopped gigging. Um, at the beginning of the year anyway, because I've actually had quite a few vocal issues going on. So for me, like I was, I, I had a casual job. Like I was very grateful. Like I was in a ideal situation, uh, during that time. Uh, so many artists that I was following and, and friends with, I could just see it's, it's just been like terrible this year for so many people. And it's really been hard. I, I'm seeing like an ongoing thing, like it's been hard for a lot of people to create because it's kind of like, ah. <laughs> and because I think as well, when you're not out there having experiences, it's harder to write because you've just been sitting in the same spot. Yep. You're kind of like, well, what do I write about? Like, I just feel the same every day. I feel weird. I feel anxious. And I don't know. I'm weird. Like, I can't really write when I'm going through those times. I have to kind of wait until after to reflect. Yeah. So... I'd say with COVID, uh, Backstreet Boys, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say with that, um, I, uh, yeah, definitely found it hard to write. Although, Sis got a tiny bit of super out and got a piano. So, you know, there's some up, there's some silver linings. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta treat, you know, I was one of those people, I was like, stuff it, because I was meant to go on a holiday as well. So yeah. I already had, like, I was, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm getting my keyboard. I said I wanted to get it. What else am I going to do? I'm not going to be able to go overseas for a while. So yeah. YOLO. But um, yeah, I think like with Moonstone, that was kind of brought about because I was working in a casual job um, that wasn't good um, yeah. at all, the way they handled that situation. 
was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I had a, I was going through a pretty bad time in that sense because I was working in a job that didn't value me and um, like all the people that worked for them. And it was like a very dark time for me because I was like, I've got to get out of here because like I, one, I felt unsafe and two, like, I think it just really put so many things into perspective for me where I was like, I have, I, I can work in my industry. Like I can make this happen. I was like, probably not now because obviously a lot of people don't have jobs. It's probably a terrible time to take a risk, but I thought not nah, stuff it. Like if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? So um, I started Moonstone, actually got into a government program that funds small businesses. Hey, so Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I get. That's it. Yes. How good. Um, yeah. So I was like, no, you know what? Like I can do this. It's a perfect time to do it. So got into it and that was great because it actually really helped me shape, you know, what I offer, my business plan and, and all that jazz. So I would recommend it to uh, anyone listening that has same just doesn't know how to yes right yeah. oh my gosh we have to talk about this yeah. um because <laughs> it's been great and yeah so once I got into that I was like see you later like left left the job so I and you know I made room for another person to get a job that's how I saw it because I had a lot of guilt uh leaving because I was like oh you know a lot of people don't have this opportunity moment but I was also like I am not working another day for this company. Yeah. So I, <laughs> oh my God, what if this spreads? You know what? I don't care. So that <laughs> starts the tea. I can relate Drink to that and, and whole story though. The tea. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, we'll probably have to talk about that on, uh, when we catch I'll, up. I'll <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, yes. Um, oh my gosh, that's great. So are you doing Nice as well? Yeah, yeah, same. It's 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 a very good little business thing that they've got going for small people. One of my mates put me onto it um, just for people yeah. who want to get started and do something and want to be their own boss. Yes. So it's definitely, definitely yeah. worth it. It gives you those tools for anyone listening. hundred percent. Yes, definitely. And yeah, there's a better time to do it. I feel like it is now because so mm. many people are just, you know, it's, I don't know. Time, time to new chapters, new beginnings. New chapters, figure out how to adapt to the climate faster than all the other people are, and then you'll be fine. It's good. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's solid stuff. Um, I, think, cool. I think there's just one other thing, and we've given a lot of advice, I guess. Um, but mm. is there anything, any nugget of wisdom you want to give to people who are looking to get into the music industry, whether it be writers, musicians, audio engineers, just anyone. And what's your, I guess, nugget of wisdom you've got? Um, I would say the number one thing is, and I should probably take my own bouts of wisdom, but I just don't think I'd be here without thinking this way. I just truly believe do not compare yourself to anyone else. Do not try and be anyone else. Do not try and do anything that anyone else, like just, just be you go with your gut, go with like where the wind takes you basically. So I would say, yeah, like if you're writing songs and you're like, this doesn't sound like anyone, this isn't good enough. Like, you know, would this be played on your No, doesn't matter. Okay. You like your songs. If you've got a story to tell, it's meant to be like, I really took a lot from, uh, because one of my favorite movies, honestly, hands down, A Star is Born. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> tears. But that that quote he said actually quite literally may have changed my life a little bit. Because when I think it's at the beginning and he was like, oh, there can be a million people with, like, talent or whatever. But, like, if you've got a story to tell, like, you, you got it or whatever. I don't know. It was something like that. And I went, oh, my God. It's in. You know, so I think... <laughs> Like, and that applies to anyone in the creative industry. And it does include audio engineers because like and there's so many avenues as well. So I think as long as you're going in with like being yourself, staying true to your values and, you know, it's always something you want to do and it's something you love doing, you've got a passion, nothing's going to stop you. And if you just put that amount of energy in like this, I'm one of those people, I'm, like I just feel like if you're putting so much hard work in, there's just no way nothing's going to work out for you. Like if you're just 
you know, but again, that doesn't mean like, oh, sorry, I do have one more thing I have to say because it kind of ties into it. You don't have to work every single day. And this is something mm. I've learned, okay, because I, I'm i a different, I've actually learned this, like, because I, I, I have a psych, like a psychologist, and she helped me understand because I just love how they just help you understand your mind, yeah. especially as a creative person. I think, like, it can just. Oh, freezing there. <laughs> Hello. Oh no, guys, we've lost her. <laughs> uh oh. Sorry. No, you're Sorry, okay. my internet just absolutely cut out for some reason. Um, uh, do you want me to keep COVID life? Yeah, no. Um, I guess we'll just. I'll just put in a little thing here that says COVID life. Um, well. <sighs> So you dropped out a bit there, but you're getting onto a good point. Um, do you just want to oh. finish that off? Yes. So um, my partner, he's a bottom top work person and I'm a top bottom. So what that means is if you, um, like there's people that work on their craft every single day or like work on their projects every single day, right? And then they eventually get to the top, right? But then there's top bottom learners who don't work on their craft every single day but they're always up the top they, they have to figure it all out first right so it's almost like as a musician for example you're up the top thinking feeling like getting that experience and then you can just write an album in a month which is actually how I work so my partner will work on his things every single day his music and he'll get a song done maybe at the end of the week or the end of the month or something I won't write for like two months or even three months, but I'll write, I'll smash out a whole bunch of songs mm. in like a few weeks after those two months. So, and I think that's something when I learned about that, I was like, I think that could actually, I just didn't never knew that that was a thing. And I think it can really um, help a lot of musicians because yeah, like, I don't know, people always like, don't wait for inspiration. Some people genuinely do not work in that every single day thing. Yeah. And that is like, you shouldn't feel bad about that. And I can't believe it's taking me this many years to realize that's an actual psychological thing. Yeah. And, you know, because the people that are up the top, the top bottom learners, you know, they're the ones in their car writing down the lyrics or they're the ones like crying to Taylor Swift's new album going, oh my God, inspo, you know. So, and they're the people that might pick up the guitar for a little bit and they're like, oh, I got a few chords down. Cool. I'll come back to that. Like, so I just think when I learn about that, think, you don't have to be this person that's, you know, as long as you're passionate about it and that's what you want to do and you know that you put in the hard work and you've got all that success anyway mm. from putting in that work, like you, like not the success but the evidence that, like, you work as hard as that bottom top learner, then, like, you don't need to change yourself for anybody. Definitely. No, that's – I think that's solid advice to leave off on, but – Thank you very much yes. for joining us. Um, it's <laughs> okay. been awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. No, oh my gosh. Like I felt like I, you, you, you just made me ponder a, a bit there. Like, oh, might have to do a podcast with you. I think you've inspired Ooh. me. <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, the uh, Moonstone Artist Podcast coming soon, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh gosh, who knows? Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.